This video discusses finding the different trig functions given a single point. Given any point x, y, we will be able to find the different trig functions regardless of the quadrant. Initially, we were talking about the unit circle. Remember, a unit circle is simply a circle with radius equal to 1. And we had looked at an angle in standard position on this unit circle in the point x, y, and it formed this angle theta. We dropped down this point and made a right triangle. The two legs were x and y. We found out that sine of theta, which is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, was equal to y over 1, or y, because again, we were talking about the unit circle, a circle with radius 1. Likewise, we found cosine to be x divided by 1, or just x, because that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, was y over x. Now, however, we're going to talk about a general circle, not limiting ourselves to circles with radius equal to 1. Now we will call the radius equal to r. Again, if I look at my sine, cosine, and tangent, we still have the same definitions, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and opposite over adjacent. But now, for instance with sine, the opposite side is still y, but the hypotenuse is now r, it is no longer equal to 1. So the sine of theta, given a general circle, is y divided by r. Likewise, cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, or x divided by r. Tangent, which doesn't have to do with the hypotenuse, only the opposite and adjacent sides, is the same as we found before. That is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent, or y over x. Well, let's look at an example. Say we're given the problem that we have an angle theta, who, in standard position, has a terminal side that contains the point negative 5, 12, and we want to find the exact values of sine theta, cosine theta, and tan theta. Keep in mind, any time you see the word exact, that means put aside your calculator, you won't be using the sine, cosine, tangent buttons on your calculator. First of all, let's graph this point, negative 5, 12. We see that negative 5, 12 ends up in quadrant 2, and makes the angle shown on the screen. However, as before, we don't want to use that obtuse angle, we want to find the reference angle, that is the angle that's formed between the terminal side of the angle and the x-axis, and we've marked that here as theta. And I know if my point is negative 5, 12, that means my value for x on the adjacent leg of that angle theta is negative 5, and the side opposite, the y value, will be positive 12. Well, I know sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. The trouble is, I don't know what the hypotenuse is. This is not a unit circle, so I have to find the hypotenuse. How do I do that? Well, at the beginning of this class, we used the Pythagorean Theorem, and we will use this again. Remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared for a right triangle. So we'll take our two legs, negative 5, square that, and add to that 12 squared, and we'll get c squared. Doing a little bit of math, we find that c squared is equal to 169, or c is equal to 13. That is, the hypotenuse is length 13. Now we can go ahead and find our sine. The sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, or 12 over 13. Cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And we see that the adjacent side is equal to negative 5, and the hypotenuse again is 13. So our answer is negative 5 divided by 13. Finally, the tangent of this angle theta is opposite over adjacent, or 12 divided by negative 5. Here I've rewritten cosine and tangent as negative 5 over 13 and negative 12 over 5, instead of leaving the negation sign in either the numerator or the denominator. It's the same number, I just like the way this looks, because now I remember in quadrant 2, we learned that sine was positive, but cosine and tangent were negative in quadrant 2. And we see here with our example that that does indeed hold true. 
And there we have an example of finding trig functions given a point in xy form.